everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm sharing this cute little birthday shaker card using Mama Elephant products. So I could not resist ordering a few things from the new Mama Elephant release. I just love these little hamsters. And here I'm just showing you how I store my stamps and dies. Um, I get these little plastic bags, which I buy from Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store. And I keep my stamps in there. I generally keep the card inserts that the stamps come with. And for the dies, I use a magnetic sheet, which I also get from Daiso, and just slip it in the back with the coordinating dies. Standalone dies, I do exactly the same thing, just use the ma magnetic sheet with the plastic wallets. When I've sorted all these out, I generally put them into IKEA storage bins. And it's a system that works really well for me. It's not expensive or fancy, but it works. And I think that's the main thing. So here's a closer look at these celebration hamsters. They're just so, so cute. I'm so excited to be crafting with these. And I just love this guy with the balloons tied around his waist. I just think he's absolutely adorable. Uh, so I'm getting my stamp platform out, ready to stamp these images out onto some paper. Um, you'll see that little blue tub that I've got up in the top uh, right hand corner. That holds my um, cheap version of stamp shammy, I guess you could say. It's just a, a microfiber cloth, which I keep damp inside that little plastic tub. So it, again, it's um, cheap and cheerful, but it works really well for me. So here I have got some Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper, and it's just a scrap that I had left over from another um, project. Um, I tried to use as much of my little scraps as possible, and because I'm only doing two images, I thought I would just use this little piece up. Um, I guess you could say that I'm quite a uh, <laughs> thrifty crafter, I suppose. Um, but I think most of us crafters tend to be like that. So I'm just going to wipe off these stamps. Because they're brand new, they've never been used before, I'm just going to wipe them down a little bit. I find that that helps to give a better, Im a better um, stamp, um, stamped image. It uh, just makes the, the image a little bit crisper. Sometimes there's some oil on top of the stamps. Um, which stops it from stamping out nicely the first time. So once I've done that, I'm gonna go in with my Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink, which is a Copic friendly ink, and just stamp out those images. I'm gonna do it a couple of times. As I said, they're new stamps, so I wanna make sure that I get a nice crisp image. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that a couple of times. I did manage to smear some ink in the bottom of the paper, but it doesn't matter because that piece is gonna be cut off, but you know what, I'm quite clumsy. I'm always doing things like this. Always putting my fingers in the ink, all that sort of stuff. I generally get it everywhere. <laughs> Here we go, I'm gonna start my coloring. I'm using E31 and E33. And I'm gonna color the top of the hamster's heads in these colors. Um, I'm, I've been inspired by my children. They have two hamsters called Sugar and Spice. Sugar is all white and Spice has this little bit of brown on the top of her head. So that's what I've gone for with these hamsters and I think they turned out quite cute. So very basic coloring. I'm not an expert in terms of coloring at all. Um, most of what I learn has come from watching other people color on YouTube. And so I'm just going very basic to color coloring today. Going around the outside with the darker marker and then blending out the lighter marker. And I'm doing that a couple of times just to give a nice smooth blend. I think these images are so cute that, you know, they don't need a really detailed color. I'm sure that there are people out there who could do amazing things with these. I think they turned out really cute anyway. <laughs> like I say, it's not my forte. I'm not really, really strong in the coloring department, but it's what I enjoy doing. And I think that's the main thing when it comes to crafting. So for the little bodies, I'm going in with E40 and E41. And again, I'm just going around the outsides and then blending out with the lighter marker. I'm not blending all the way out, so I'm not coloring in the entire image with these colors. I'm just leaving a little bit white. I do want them to look white rather than browny or grayish. So that's what I'm doing, just adding a little bit of shading to them, I guess. And then just blending out a little bit. And I actually do go in with the colorless blender as well, just to smooth out the edges a little bit so it's not quite so stark but I think that they turned out kind of cute. I just, I just, I just love these guys. I really hadn't intended to buy anything from the Mama Elephant new release because I was saving up for the Lawn Fawn release. 
um, that when I saw these guys, I just couldn't resist getting them. So then I'm going to go in with my R20. I'm going to add a little bit to the ears, the noses, and just create some little cheeks as well. I always think that looks really, really cute. And that's the hamsters done. So now it's just going on to the accessories. So for the sparklers, I'm using Y13 and Y15. Again, very basic coloring, using the darker marker in the center of the sparkler and then just blending out around the outsides with the lighter marker. And I'm gonna use that same color combination for one of the balloons. I wanted to go with a bit of a, a rainbow palette, I guess. Um, I didn't wanna go really bright traditional rainbow colors. I wanted it to be a little bit more muted. Um, so I've tried to choose my colors accordingly. So this yellow is probably one of the brighter colors in the palette, but I really like it and I think it looks really nice. So again, I'm just going in with the darker marker, blending out with the lighter marker and repeating that process a couple of times. For the green, I've gone with G12 and G14. I really like these shades. Again, they're quite muted, um, a little bit softer than your brighter greens, but they still pack a nice little punch and I really like them. Um, it was a little bit tricky to blend these two colors together. So I ended up doing a little bit of tip to tip coloring just to try and get a nicer blend, a smoother blend. But I start out darkest around the outside, blend out with the lightest, go back on with my darkest again. And then you'll see me doing a little bit of tip to tip coloring just to try and blend that out. So here we go, I'm just using the tip. I actually just, <laughs> my markers aren't very clean. <laughs> So there's a bit of color around the base on the on the gray part of the marker at the base um, which i'm just picking up with the other marker and that kind of worked quite well so there we go that's the green finished with next i'm going to go in with some purple colors these are bv02 and bv04 um kind of yeah i just really like these colors they're really just pretty kind of I wouldn't say they're pastel, but they're not bright either. They're kind of in between. Um, really nice colors, really pretty. Just again, going around the outside with the darker marker and blending out with the lighter marker. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process again. So I was debating the color palette for this card. I knew that I wanted my balloons to be kind of a rainbow color. I wasn't sure what color to do the background and I really wasn't sure what color to do the um, the cover, the party scene cover dye. I tried white initially and wasn't sure if I liked it quite so stark. Um, so I played around a little bit, but you'll come, we'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> this is the pinks that I used. I used RV52 and RV55. And again, just adore these colors. Um, cotton candy pink. I mean, you know, you can't beat cotton, cotton candy pink. It's so sweet, so pretty. I just really love it. And these two colors blend out beautifully together. Um, they're one of my kind of go-to pink colors that I always reach for. So I'm just gonna blend that out again, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then I'll move on to my final balloon, which I'm doing in some blue colors. I've chosen B04 and B01. And these colors remind me of just a, a beautiful blue sky on a sunny day. They're really kind of happy, happy blue colors, if that makes sense. Um, and again, a little bit softer, not quite so bright in, in your face as some of the blues, but still pack a nice little punch. So I'm really happy with this, with this color palette. And I think they will kind of look quite nice together. So there we are, just blending out again with the lightest one. I'm just making sure that's all nice and smooth. Then off camera, I will go ahead and fussy cut these images out. I didn't think you'd want to sit there watching me cut them. Oh yeah, the blue did bleed a little bit. So I just went in with the pink marker just to try and fix that up a bit. So once they're all fussy cut out, I went ahead and used my white jelly roll pen just to add some little highlight details. I really like doing this to my images. I think particularly for images that are supposed to be round, um, it gives that kind of roundness to them. Um, and it also just adds a, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of interest to the image. Um, I did put some little dots on the hamster's cheeks as well. 
I just think it makes it look kind of fun. Um, I mean, these are obviously, they're not realistic drawings and colorings in, so <laughs> I think it just adds a little bit of that fun element to it. So here's the um, cover die. I decided to go ahead and cut it out in a gray. I used Concord and Knight's Dove Gray, and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. And now I've gone ahead and cut a um, four and a quarter by five and a half inch Bristol Smooth panel. I've actually cut it just slightly smaller than that. And I thought I'd be really clever and <laughs> stick it down to my makeup platform using some um, some repositionable adhesive, <laughs> but it didn't want to stick today. It really didn't want to work for me. And my platform was moving around all over the place as well. I was really having trouble holding this down. So in the end, I think I grabbed a scrap piece of card so I didn't get my fingers in all the ink. Um, I'm blending this out with Distress Oxide in Squeeze Lemonade. And again, I really struggled to think of a color to use in the background. Initially, I was gonna go for a rainbow background, but then I decided because I'm using rainbow sprinkles uh, in my shake element, I didn't wanna go rainbow in the background as well, if that makes sense. So I decided just to go with yellow and I think it turned out quite nicely. Um, I did do an ombre effect. So I started at the bottom quite heavy handed and quite dark and then blended out to white at the top. So I'm just, um, yeah, again, I've sped this up, so this isn't how fast I normally do it. But once that was done, um, I thought about, you know, spattering it with some water or some paint, but I decided I actually just liked it like that. And now I'm just laying everything out to see how it all fits together and make sure that I'm happy with the placement of where everything's going to go. So I decided that this little hamster should look like he'd floated up and got himself tangled up in the streamers at the top. I just think he's so cute. And then the little guy with the sparklers is going to go next to the sentiment. So I did stamp that out with some Concord and Ninth green ink. I think it was called Clover. I will check that and pop it in the description below. So I've put that aside. I've cut out an acetate piece, which is five and a half by four and a quarter, so that I can put that on the back. I'm going to glue that on with some liquid glue. And once that's done, it's just time to go around the edges with some foam tape. Now, <laughs> I don't know if, um, if any of you have got the same die. I'd love to hear whether you have the same thing as I do. The top of my die, if you have a look at the strip at the top of the die, it's a lot thicker than the bit at the bottom. Um, I don't know if it's meant to be like that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say anything because it might be an intentional design feature, but the top part of the die is definitely a lot thicker than the bottom part. So here we go. I've got my sprinkles, which I cut using the die. So there was these little triangles and stars, and I used those to cut um, some shaker pieces from some cardstock. So I used the same colors that I used for the balloons. So I've got blue, green, yellow, pink, and purple. And I just wanted it all to coordinate nicely with those balloons. So I've put them down. I'm gonna grab my anti-static powder tool and just go around the edges to try and take away some of the stickiness so that my shaker pieces can move around nicely. Now, I probably should have done this a little more vigorously than I did. I think <laughs> I probably didn't do it quite enough. Um, some of my shaker pieces did stick. Um, I managed to kind of bang them around a little bit <laughs> and get them moving. So it wasn't a disaster, but I think, yeah, I probably should have done that a little, a little better. So here I am just gonna peel off the, the liner paper. This is always the hardest part, isn't it? It always gets stuck. It's always hard to find the ends. <laughs> I always struggle with this. Um, and it, yeah, flings around all over the place. But once I've got that liner paper off, I'm just gonna line it up nicely with the Distress Ink panel that I've um, created. And just make sure I've got it all nice and lined up so that it all sticks down nicely. And I'm just gonna press that down and then I'm gonna have a little play. I'm gonna shake it around and see how it goes. So initially it looks quite good, but then when you shake it around a bit more, it starts to stick to the top of the bottom a little bit. Um, but you know what, it's okay, it works out in the end. I just have to bang it around a bit to get it moving. So last thing to do, well not the last thing, but nearly the last thing is to attach my images that I created. So here I am just giving it a crochet. And you can see it's all kind of bunched up at the bottom. So I'm having to bang it around, <laughs> probably been a bit rough with it. 
um, but it gets moving in the end, it's okay. So I'm going to grab my balloon image first because it's the biggest image. I want to stick that down first and I'm going to use my Tonic Craft Tacky Glue. Um, I like this glue. It's got a fairly fine nozzle at the top um, and, you know, I'm quite heavy handed with glue. I don't know if you're the same. I tend to put quite a lot on. I hate the thought of anything coming unstuck. So I tend to put more on than probably need to be. Um, but I'm just going to stick that down there. I already know the placement because I tried it all out earlier, so I know exactly where I'm going to stick everything. I just want to do it orderly. So I've got my biggest um, image first. Then I'm going to go in with my sentiment and just get that lined up into the bottom left hand corner. So again, probably going in quite heavy handed with my <laughs> glue just to make sure it all sticks down nicely. And I'm using liquid glue um, because of acetate. It, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that it was going to stick down nicely and, and not wriggle around too much. Often I'll use some um, some dot runner or um, dot, dot adhesive. I'm not sure um, what, what the technical term for it is, but um, because this is acetate it's going on to, I wanted to use liquid glue. So there we go, this is my final image, the little guy with the sparklers. And now the fun part, you get to shake it around. So I just attached this to a top folding plain white card base and yeah, it's done. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, like I say, you can kind of really see in the, in the image, the top part of that die is a lot thicker. I'd really love to know if yours is the same, if that's an intentional um, design feature. I'm going to have to go onto the Mama Elephant website and check that out. It's not a big issue, but I just wondered. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that card today. Um, if you did, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you thought of this one. Thank you so, so much for joining me and I hope that you'll come back again.